Steve also drives a much more powerful truck. This one has a 24,000 horsepower jet engine. It can reach 150 miles per hour in under a quarter of a mile. It's the fastest truck in Europe. But the fastest truck in the world is the Shockwave. This truck is powered by three Pratt & Whitney J48 jet engines, producing an incredible 36,000 horsepower. At full thrust, they develop four times more power than an F-14 jet fighter. Kent Shockley and his father built the truck from the ground up any other truck would simply disintegrate under the pressure. Basically everything's custom built, hand built. It's designed to go fast. The vehicles were standard road trucks, but fitted with specially designed tires and a separate heater to prevent the diesel from freezing. Driving across Siberia, trucks and drivers were subjected to temperatures of minus 40 degrees. It was an epic test of both human and mechanical endurance. When they reached the Bering Straits, the plan was to drive the vehicles right across the ice, but an early thaw forced them to be airlifted instead. The second half of their journey took them across the Arctic, proving that these trucks were capable of enduring the harshest conditions on Earth. The expedition arrived in New York four months after they had begun their epic journey. They had traveled 20,000 miles. In Australia, trucks have to travel long distances across rough country on a daily basis. In the outback, the towns are so far apart, they use a special kind of truck. Several trailers are joined together to make one long road train. The roads across the outback are straight and empty, perfect for monster vehicles. Here there are few railroads, and only these giant trucks visit the remote mines and farms. Valuable resources are carried by road train from the center of the country to the more populated cities on the coast. It's not surprising it's an Australian mining company that operates the longest truck in the world. This is the custom-built 3B, affectionately known as the Centipede. It's a 205-ton, 160-foot-long rig.
It has an 18-speed gearbox with a 550 horsepower engine and carries over a ton of fuel. It has 110 wheels on 28 axles. The centipede transports zinc ore from a mine in the Northern Territories to a port hundreds of miles away. It works 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And in one year, it can haul a quarter of a million tons of ore. Australians have come to rely heavily on these amazing machines. And there are plans for even longer road trains in the future. The mining company is so pleased with the performance of the centipede that they have built another one. Now there are two identical longest trucks in the world. But a truck doesn't have to be long to carry large loads. This building weighs 1,790 tons and is 75 feet high. It's sitting on top of one of the most unusual trucks ever built. The Mammut Company specializes in transporting huge loads. People come and they walk next to something that we're going to move and just say, that's impossible, can't be done, but we can usually do it. They achieve the impossible by using self-propelled modular transporters. These units can be joined together in a variety of configurations, depending on the weight and size of the load. All the wheels can turn 360 degrees, together or separately. So the transporters can drive forward or backwards, sideways, diagonally, even in a circle. Everything comes back to just a single point of control. So one person can operate the system, whether there's one module or a hundred modules. I've worked with a variety of transport systems in my time, but I've never come across anything quite as clever as this. In Malaysia, transporting a 500-ton gas tank 15 miles was one of their more spectacular projects. This gigantic load was hauled by just one driver. He has a control box in front of him with two joysticks on, and the signals from those joysticks through a series of computers provide the propulsion, the steering, and the jacking up and down of the system. It took a whole day, but the 165-foot-long tank finally reached the port where it was loaded onto a ship. This was big, but they can carry even bigger loads. The modular concept and the way that it can be expanded really means that there isn't a limit. American truckers love their trucks, care for them like sweethearts, and take them to shows to show them off. One of these proud truck owners is Todd Job, who lovingly cares for his Peterbilt 379. I do this because of the, the fun, the people that you meet, and I want my truck to look shiny. For me, it's just the pride of owning it. If I'm not either working, sleeping, doing paperwork, I'm polishing. 
pretty much just doing this as a hobby, still getting to play, but still making money, do what I want to do. Todd hauls for a private trucking company and travels thousands of miles in his truck. What I like about trucking the most is the freedom, not somebody looking over your shoulders. You get to do what you want to do as long as you make your deliveries and pickups on time. Right now, I'm having a lot of fun. Todd's tender, loving care for his truck finally paid off this year. He won the biggest truck honor there is, best of show at the Shell Super Rig Contest. I was very excited. One of the goals I had when I started doing the truck was to get on the Shell Super Rig calendar. I'm trying to make a name, to get my truck known. It's starting to come around. Many trucks around the world are now run on diesel fuel, which provides more power and better fuel economy. But there's a great pressure on the truck industry to produce a more environmentally friendly vehicle that can do the job just as efficiently. Radical solutions will have to be found because it's estimated that by the year 2000, 900 billion ton miles of freight will be moved each year by trucks in the US alone. One solution could be Volvo's environmental concept truck, the ECT. It has been specifically designed to minimize air pollution in cities. It's powered by a gas turbine, like a helicopter, which in turn drives an electric motor. When only minimum power is required, all surplus energy is diverted to batteries for storage. The idea is that you can run at very low emissions using the gas turbine engine pure and simple and then when you get into the city centre you can switch to battery mode which of course is zero emission. This turbine is run on ethanol but ECT could run on any liquid fuel or natural gas. Another advantage is that it's very quiet which helps to reduce noise pollution in urban areas. It's almost like a spacecraft because you just get the whine of the engine going through. You don't get any of the normal noise you would expect with an engine and a gearbox from today's conventional truck. The body of the truck is made from aluminum instead of steel. It's much lighter and it's easier to recycle. The ECT also has front and rear wheel steering, which allows for easy handling. You can in fact park by just engaging the sideways steering action and the vehicle will crab sideways in alongside the curb. The reality is that ECT may never be manufactured as a production vehicle, but many of the ideas and technologies that it explores will be incorporated in trucks in the next millennium. Although the design of the truck may change over time, it will always be an indispensable workhorse. Tough, reliable, 